Question, or one in seven players, we're told, sought some sort of uh, professional help last season, which is an unbelievable number when you consider uh, yeah, the, the pressures that they're under yeah. in, in this game, and there's been another instance here. Yeah, there has. This one's a, a part harrowing story, uh, as JB said off the top, and, and a part inspirational one. It involves Heath Black, who played 192 games for Fremantle and St Kilda, retired in 2008. He's come forward to the footy show of his own volition. He, he's, he's done it partly, but not, not totally, as an attempt to advise other players that seek professional help the moment they feel they have the type of mental problems that he has experienced. Now, he felt he was misdiagnosed with the depression he had, and he actually felt that uh, football acted as a medication for the depression he had. It, it totally went uh, very dark for, for Heath the moment he finished his playing career. It, it got dark in the, in the latter years of that career, but particularly dark once he had stopped playing. He's, uh, he's lost a fair bit, pretty much everything in, in a sense, a marriage, uh, some lucrative jobs, um, some, some property uh, developments that he had, had a hand in, all gone the moment that uh, some erratic behaviour, some, some violent behaviour relating to the, what he says it was a misdiagnosis of, of a condition he had. So he's told the footy show tonight and he's come forward to the footy show and he wants his story told because he feels it's good for him and others. He said that the, the football was a form of medication, medication for him while he was playing but uh, things turned very dark the moment he retired. When I retired, it, things changed. Um, I really turned into uh, what I would call you know, a monster. Uh, I had werewolf-like tendencies. Um, I, I would put my uh, put my Superman suit on and and just walk the walk. And and at times I I really felt as if I needed to be hurt, um, which is it's hard to imagine. But but these are the thought these are the thoughts that were going through my head at the time. Um, I didn't know which way to look. Um, my partner Asha was under in extreme pressure. Um, she was new into the relationship, and it was like she was living with two people. Um, there was you know, we call it Keith and Heath. And we laugh about it now, but essentially that's what it was. What mood was I in? What was the worst incident in that period? I think the scariest one um, that I, I shake my head was, I went to Thailand on a footy trip and it was my last football trip with, um, with the guys. And it was uh, day one of five over there. And I really um, went over there to, to totally destroy myself in every capacity. I wasn't a drug taker, but I was a, a very heavy drinker at that point. And I went to a local strip club and uh, was quite disrespectful to one of the, one of the strippers. From there, uh, she complained her husband was the owner. And lo and behold, um, he had me taken out the front down a little alleyway and pulled a gun on me. And instead of what any normal person would do, run away. I rushed him and uh, tried to get the gun off him, uh, which was pretty, pretty scary uh, on my own. Um, and, and yeah, I, I got away with it. But that led, that story led into me going for a walk uh, to try and cool off. Ended up in a shanty town out the back of Phuket, um, drinking with the locals and, uh, and their special potions and ended up waking up on a mattress the next morning with, with 20 other people around me with no shirt on, no shoes, just shorts, and had no idea how I got there. So those sorts of things were occurring, um, and it's something to, to sort of, yeah, it was a very, very testing, scary time, um, and I was very lucky. Do you recall the turning point? Turning point for me, um, was my last indiscretion, um, drink driving. I think uh, I lost, pretty much lost everything. I lost my job uh, in the media over here in Perth. I lost, uh, I was on, you know, in a property development business. I was a director. Uh, that was all turned away. Uh, I was on the bones of my ass, and uh, the only real avenue for me in my head at that time was I really want to go to jail and just sit in the corner of a jail cell and rot. And I thought that for society, that would be the safest place for me, was just to sit there, get over whatever was happening to me, because I, I had no idea, and, and to just rot in hell, pretty much. And that's all I really deserved at that time. Heath, is this common in footy? I believe at any one time at, you know, at the clubs I played at, there was definitely guys medicated for, for conditions. We, you know, that we have a perception as AFL footballers that we're, we're mentally strong. We are, and we're physically strong. But I had a huge amount of fear of failure, 
and before the games I would vomit, um, I'd be on the toilet with the runs. Uh, all the way up until five minutes before preparation. In all the conversations we've had uh, off camera and on camera, you, you make it very clear this is not about yourself. What is it about? There wouldn't be too many people that would have, let's say, the balls to come out in front of you know, half a million to a million people and say, I've got a mental illness whilst playing footy. Um, afterwards, maybe, but we, we tend to hide these things. But what I'm trying to say is, come out within your peers, and I did to my peers a, a couple at, at Freeman, and you just feel a hell of a lot better. Because it's too hard, too hard to do on your own. And, and you did that toward the end of your career, yes? I did in the last year in particular. I confided in two people at Fremantle that I was uh, medicated, and lo and behold, they were too. <laughs> so it's funny how it works. Right now, where are you at? Every day I get challenged. I get challenged every day to, to go to the fridge and, and step back in time and, and have uh, a fair binge. Every single day that happens? Pretty much. Yeah. Yep. There's and, and what stops you now? Um, I think just children, um, a fantastic partner, uh, supportive who actually understands me as a person because not too many people do. This is a huge risk for me actually to come out and, and put myself on a pedestal uh, again to be, to be smashed around the chops, so to speak. So, uh, but I feel comfortable enough that I, I, I can do it as long as um, people get the right message.